Um, one thing I have to state, uh, unfortunately, uh, I had things to show via screens that are up here that obviously are not intended for any sort of use because I cannot hook up my laptop to any of this. Uh, who knew? Uh, um, so unfortunately, the, the things, uh, some of the videos I had planned to show, I can't show. Um, I know, I know. I, I'm sorry. I, because I, I, I know I, I said we got the Cindy video we were going to show, and um, but unfortunately, I cannot. Um, my, I do still have that that um, the the concept for an icon that never saw the light of day that I don't think anyone really knows about. Um, uh, does anyone know what, what I'm talking about? Eddie. Not Eddie. No, no, no. Not Cindy. No, no. This is a concept by the name of. It was called Crow. Uh, it was a. It was a. Um, a two-page draft that I wrote in December of 2007 that would have connected Carnival of Carnage to the next year's event, um, but that year became Bloody Mary instead. Uh, and no one has seen, no one yet has really even heard this. Patrick, I think, read it a couple of years ago. I haven't even read it or looked at it in probably seven years. Um, uh, so I'm going to read it for you guys today, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. 11 minutes left. Should I read this thing, you guys? Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll, read, I'll read this thing. Okay. So like I said, this was, this was potentially a link to the 2007 event. And I have not read this. I apologize in advance for my 2007 writing. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right. All right. Listen closely, it can still be heard. Within the wind and the cold, dark tonal notes dance. Inside the fog's memory, maniacal laughter reverberates. Wooden wagon wheels have etched trails into the earth leading off towards oblivion. It was here, on the crimson field, where horrors beyond comprehension flourished. But for now, the carnival is gone, but not forgotten. Nathaniel Crow remembered it well. He remembered the day he met the ringmaster, the clown whose face was masked in the shadows of night, simply asked for his hand, for his land. He said that this place just seemed right. It had been a long and bloody history, this land, used for early pagan rituals. Many lives were sacrificed in the name of Samhain. For centuries since then, no living thing has prospered on this land. And just prior, Nathaniel to, uh, just prior to Nathaniel owning the property, a number of townspeople burned down the funeral home of a murderous, grave-robbing caretaker, killing him inside. Now this land serves only as a home to rotting pumpkins sold for $10 a piece by Mr. Nathaniel Crow. How's business, Crow? The clown said through his mangled teeth. Nathaniel suddenly struck with the tiniest twinge of fear. Slow, he responded. This land is cursed, the clown said. Nathaniel was surprised at the statement, not because he didn't feel that it was true, but it was normally exclaimed as a question. Always has been, always will be, Nathaniel said with a sigh. I haven't sold a pumpkin, hell, I haven't sold, grown, or built anything on this land the day since the day I bought it, and that wasn't for lack of trying either. So you can put your, on your little carnival, but don't be surprised if the outcome of all of it is just like those pumpkins rotting and dead. On that, Nathaniel Crow, you can count on, the clown said. For the first time, Nathaniel caught a good glimpse of the ringmaster's face in the moonlight as he spoke. He, his twisted, toothy smile promised wonders no man has ever encountered. He told Nathaniel that the land he has been that the land has put his, his he's put his blood, sweat, and tears into, and would finally pay him back with unimaginable power. Sensing nothing more than theatrics, Nathaniel left the form the form clown to his business. As though it happened overnight, the carnival opened. The wonders the clown spoke of were amazing to Nathaniel, and in the way hell is wondrous to those who wish nothing else but to see its evils and bask in its flames. The dark carnival seduced Nathaniel in ways that cannot be explained. Temptation and sin filled his soul with sights and sounds the devil himself would consider morbid. It opened his mind to evils no man should want to survive through, but Nathaniel did survive. While all other patrons of the carnival were meeting untimely deaths, Nathaniel always walked away unscathed. Why do you allow me to live when all around me perishes at your hands? Nathaniel asked this ringmaster. You'll see, Crow, you'll see. The ringmaster replied with a laugh. Those words echoed in Nathaniel's mind as he gazed upon his now empty field. Patches of soil now show only where tents once were. His fists clenched with anger. He promised me, he whispered through his teeth. Hatred filled his soul as he lamented on power and wishes the clown prince vowed him he had not received. For the first time he felt cold, his hands now bled from being clenched so tightly, feeling the dark liquid run down his palms and drip into the soft soil below. Nathaniel's eyes caught a faded carnival poster flapping in the breeze. A large gust ripped it from a blood-stained telephone pole it was attached to. 
Nathaniel followed the tattered poster with his eyes as it drifted effortlessly in the wind, up and down, finally resting in the palm of his bloody hand. However, now Nathaniel's surprise the poster was blank. No longer did it advertise Carnival of Carnage. Instead, he noticed his blood soaking into the parchment, like running down glass, his blood fanned along the paper's fibers, forming letters. And it spelled this, forgotten are the ways of old, tradition's blood, black and cold. Up through dirt, roots grow and burst. Evils return, you'll see what came first. When ravens and crows made the night black, pumpkins were carved to keep evil back. When the howl of the wind sent shivers up spines, graves of our dead covered in vines. When black cats crossed paths and wolves howl, and true witches did more than laugh and scowl. Your time has come, Nathaniel Crow. Outside the box, you'll think, you'll grow. Terror's traditions, its ways you will demand. Halloween's true self is at hand. The poem's final words echo, his mind raced as he tried to sense what he just read. Looking down at the parchment once more, the letters turned black into the, turned back into liquid and raced back to his palms. Nathaniel's mind raced with visions. He heard, think outside the box. Ringmaster cranks a jack in the box. We are the four. You will see my you will be my finest work. A film director lines up his shot, but five men will become a true tale of terror. An old woman brandishes a pair of scissors. Nathaniel Crow. A caretaker produces a pocket watch. Your time has come. The final vision Nathaniel saw in his own face, displaying the most evil expression. Crow's eyes disappeared and blackness replaced him. His jaw fell agape and candlelight appeared deep in his throat. The last thing he heard was a raven shrill, ear-piercing call. Nathaniel awoke lying in the cursed field he owned, lifting his head, looking forward. Nathaniel saw something unreal. Hundreds of pumpkins he once sold in position in front of him, all brandished carvings of faces in pure terror, each lit from the inside. The candles burned in varied hues of red and orange. Just behind the rotting patch, hundreds of crows were perched atop a broken wooden fence. Their eyes glowed red, all focused on Nathaniel. And just as the moon crept from behind the clouded sky, every bird in unison cried out and leapt from their perch towards him. Instinctively, Nathaniel tried to get up. However, his cursed land had something different in mind. Mangled and porous fruit shot through the ground with great force and stabbed through Nathaniel's appendages, pinning him. The chorus of crows flying towards him muffled his cries of pain. Landing on top of Nathaniel, the crows began pecking at his clothing and flesh. Digging and clawing, they, the crows tore deep in Nathaniel. He was being transformed. Every crow that removed a piece of flesh, large or small, another was at the ready to replace it with a piece of rotten pumpkin and straw. So quickly and meticulously, the crows ripped and replaced Nathaniel's body. The roots of earth that once imprisoned Nathaniel now began wrapping in his hands and feet, creating earthy claws. While a crow pecked out his left eye, the ground forced Nathaniel into an upright position. Looking now like a grotesque marionette, the birds continued to peck away. His screams slowly transformed from a gritty liquid sound to a deep, resonating bellow as roots ripped through his neck, grabbing his jaw and breaking it, forcing it downward towards his chest. The skin of the round stretching and tearing as another crow places a candle from a nearby pumpkin into his mouth. The candle's flame ignites a bright orange, its flickers lighting inside. One by one, the crows left the form that was once Nathaniel Crow and returned, perched atop the rotting pumpkins. Landing, they gazed at what they had created, Halloween itself. All the fears, blood, revelry, and traditions that make up that eve so hallowed was infused into the body of a man. The roots finally lowered his body to the ground as two crows carried a large brown duster that once cost him an average scarecrow not far away. Nathaniel Crow was no more. Now, only Crow was born. His land, which contained the souls of Halloween's past, had given him the great power he was promised, his only purpose, to let none forget the true terror that Halloween was centuries ago. Simply put, to make the spirit of Halloween terrifying once again, and uphold terror's tradition. It's his ways he will demand. Halloween's true self is at hand. So that, that's not happening. Uh, uh, I appreciate you guys sitting through that. That was cool. That was fun to read. Um, one more major announcement, May 19th.